Hi guys and welcome to video number 24 in the But How Do With No Companion video series and today we're going to be looking at shift registers. So shift registers are not part of John's book but since we're going to use them in our project here I'm going to do a short introduction on them. So the registers that we have been using so far namely the SN74HC373 chips are what we could call PIPO registers short for parallel in parallel out. That means that they have 8 inputs as well as 8 outputs and you set all the 8 bits at the same time using the set signal. If we look at the R0 register here, there are in fact 8 inputs and 8 outputs there. It's just that in our case the inputs and outputs are tied together using the short green jumpers since they are connected to the same bus. If we look at the datasheet for the SN74HC373, we could see that in fact the inputs and the outputs are distinct. All the D pins are inputs and all the Q pins are outputs. Using the set signal sets all the Q pins equal to their respective D pins at the same time. So PIPO registers work like this one on the left. But there exists a different kind of register like the one on the right that allows us to set the bit values in our register one at a time and those are called SIPO serial in parallel out shift registers. One of the advantages of using a SIPO shift register is that it requires less input signals to send data to it. You need one data signal, one clock signal, one latch signal that basically replaces the set signal. So with two new signals you can send your byte of data to the register instead of using eight signals. Let's take a look at this animated GIF which comes from the lastminuteengineers.com site that shows very nicely how a SIPO shift register works. You send your bits using the data signal, one bit for each pulse of the clock, and the bits are stored in a first component called the shift register. Each new bit essentially pushes or shifts the previous bit down the line. When all your bits are sent, you turn on the latch signal and that copies the bits from the shift register to the latch register and from there they can now be read. The shift register that we will be using here is the SN74HC595 and it is a very popular one. It's frequently used with Arduinos to control many devices, often LEDs, using only a few pins. Let's hook one up to a test bench and see how it works in practice. Okay so here we have an Arduino that I've programmed to read the byte of data that's specified on this dip switch module here and copy it over to the shift register whenever the push button is pressed. The outputs of the shift register are connected to these LEDs so that we can see what's inside. This is the reset signal for uh, the shift register and the data sheet says to tie it to VCC if we don't want to use it. Here is the enable signal which works exactly like the enable signal on the 373 chip and since we always want the output to be coming out, we're going to tie it to ground. Finally, here we have the data, clock and latch signals from the Arduino going to the shift register to activate it. Let's turn it on. So now if we specify a bit pattern here and press the button, it should be replicated on these LEDs. Okay, perfect. So that seems to have worked quite well. So we can see that the 8 bits have been transferred to the shift register through these only 3 wires. Let's try a different pattern. Push the button again. Perfect. So that's still working. And what's really cool about these shift registers is that you can daisy chain them together. So if I add a second one in this area here, also with its corresponding LEDs, and we press the button once, the pattern will go to the first one. If we press the button again, 
the second pattern will move here and this one will be shifted there let's try that out okay so I've added a new shift register here and some LEDs exactly the same way we did the first one and I've daisy chained them together and to do that you take the clock and connect it to the previous clock the latch connect to the previous latch and the data uh, is sourced using the last output pin of the first shift register so the last output pin is really this one here but it is mirrored to this pin here pin 9 so that's the one I used to uh, feed the data into the second shift register so let's try it out okay so I'm going to set a pattern for the first one let's send it good now let's inverse it and send it again so now when I press the button this pattern should move over here and the new one should take its place and that's exactly what we see is happening so by connecting four of these shift registers together we're going to create a 32-bit control word that we're going to use to send the control signals throughout our entire CPU and we will be able to do that using only three pins from our Arduino so in the next video we're going to actually build all this out in our control section see you soon <laughs>